Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm a composer, a musician, and I guess over the past few years, a collector of unique and somewhat unusual musical instruments. And in 2022 in particular, I became fascinated with a subset of instruments called the Taisho Goto, or the Nagoya Harp, or the Taisho Harp, or whatever name you like to call it. I'm fascinated in their acoustic qualities. I'm fascinated in their electric qualities. And I'm fascinated how they're a keyed instrument that's also strung. But at the start of the year, I got my hands on a Taisho that doesn't just need to be strung. No. This Taisho is bow. Meet the Suzuki YTS-01 or the Yukiu. And for the life of me, there is next to no information on the web I can find about it. At least not in the English language. And I'd like to provide at least somewhat of an overview of it if for nothing other than documentation's sake. So what's going on? Well, it's a keyed violin. Not dissimilar to Nickel Harpa, though distinctly Japanese in make and origin. And it uses the Taisho Goto as a basis for how it plays and functions. We've got a keyboard with 27 keys on it that depresses down on a set of strings intended to be tuned to the key of G. This range, though, is a little deceptive as the tuning allows the pitch to go half a step below when played open. Likewise, the upper string is an octave higher, meaning you've got a breadth of about 40 notes altogether. Both strings can be played at once, and since pitch is controlled with the press of a button, double stomps are relatively easy to pull off, even for an absolute beginner. Like me. <laughs> That said, how does this work? Well, very simply, you press a button and you bump. Longs, shorts, and anything in between. Though I'll get into some of the unique elements about a few specific textures in a moment. What's helpful to know, though, is that it's capable of being played wholly acoustically, as it's got a sound chamber right here. But it also has line in, meaning you can hook this thing up directly to a sound system, which, to make things a tad stranger, technically makes this an acoustic electric keyed violin. Incredible. That said, I would highly suggest, if you're aiming for a more traditional violin timbre, to provide a microphone in at least some capacity, as the natural reverberations really do help create a more vivid sound. So, for any string players, you might wonder, is this capable of techniques like vibrato? And shockingly, I believe so? I did a lot of testing messing around with this, as well as conversed with a couple other string players who I'm friends with, and I believe the approach to do it is to basically wiggle the key as you bow. You wiggle it, and you bow it, and as you do so, you get vibrato. Okay, that doesn't sound very good. I warn you. But, but I'm pretty sure if you practiced it, if you put in the time, put in the grind, you can make it work. I'm pretty sure. One other fascinating aspect is that when you take the bow out of the equation for a moment and try and play it pizzicato, or play it like a more traditional taisho. Rather than the iconic Western orchestral plucking sound one might expect, its tone and expression is more comparable to a mandolin? A banjo? Even with my inexperience as a bower, I feel like this one element has potential unto its own for composition. It's just a unique sound that I can't entirely pinpoint. An aspect 
common throughout all taijos, but still really worth mentioning, is that if you release a key while maintaining a note, the pitch will revert to the pitch of the open string. So say you're holding down a C note while you're continuing the bow. And if you let go, it will jump to the bottom G note. It will do this with any pitch, so D down to G, E, G, it's sort of a rubber banding like effect. With the UQ, it kind of works like a trill. So, I mentioned earlier that the instrument has line in, which probably has a few people wondering, how does it sound with some effects? The answer? Interesting. Really, if you treat this instrument a little less like just a keyed violin, it's sort of liberating how many unique sounds you can get out of it. So, what's the history of the instrument? Is there a distinct inventor? Well, frankly, I can't find much. This is a Suzuki made product, but it appears to be a spin on a Yamaha instrument called a Violeer, which dates back to 2001 or so, as per Yamaha's succinct page on their website. Meaning, some variation of a Taishogoro aiming to mimic the violin family has existed for about 20 years now. Sadly, that instrument doesn't have much reporting on it either. The Yukiu, for the moment at least, is still readily available on sites like Amazon.co.jp, and it is import friendly. I should know. The Violeer, in contrast, is definitely out of production, and used prices go for about 650 to 2000 USD. I'd love to get my hands on one of them someday, if not to buy, then to at least demo, because I know there's something distinctly different about the Violeer compared to the Yuki. As you can see here, the Violeer has four strings compared to the Yuki's two. How this alters the playing and capabilities of the instrument, I can only really speculate. A final thing I'd like to mention is that the Yuki definitely isn't just a regular Taisho with a bow pack tip. You can hear here on my soprano Taisho that the textures are fairly different. Same with my bass Taisho. Dave Hillowitz actually has a video on him demoing a standard Taisho with a bow, and he even made a sample library out. I'll put a link to that in the description since it's somewhat relevant to the conversation we're having at hand, and he's just a tremendous content creator. I'm sure if anyone even finds this video, they'll know about him. That said, how about we put this thing through a test drive? Try out some of the UQ's acoustic qualities, electric qualities, do a little demo. <laughs> 